Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship this morning. You can turn to the back of your bulletin for some announcements. Tonight is the next hymn at Ferriton United Methodist at 6 o'clock. I'm going to be there. It's going to cut into my nap time, but I'll be there tonight. Um, on Tuesday, I have our Bible study at 7 o'clock. We're going to have it at Sharon's house. Um, if you're interested, let me know. Oh, I forgot to mention on tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a finance committee meeting here at the church. We're going to talk about the budget for the next year and go over the audit. Looking ahead, on December 3rd is a rummage and cookie sale. So make sure you come out and support that. It starts at 9 a.m. December 3rd. On Friday, December 9th, is the UMW Christmas dinner and cookie exchange. And there's a sign-up sheet in the vestibule for the ladies that will bring stuff for the dinner. So make sure you, they put last year's sign-up so you remember what you did last year. You want to step it up and bring something different, or you uh, want to bring the same thing, just make sure you sign up there. And the December hymn sing will be at Newport here, Newport Methodist, <laughs> on December 18th at 6 p.m., you notice you have two inserts because we're going to sing a hymn that's not in our Methodist hymnal, but I found that it is in the celebration hymnal. But I did print out the words for count your blessings. We're going to be singing that after the offering. Did you see the back? No, I didn't see that. I that. Oh, okay, that's good. I looked at the one in the hymnal. Yes. And also next Sunday will be our annual. Fuel walk around. During our worship service, we'll put money in for our fuel. You know, fuel costs have went up so much, so give as the Lord leads you. And if you want to give to a Christmas gift for me, see Sharon during the next three Sundays. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay, first I got Sally at first. Okay. Our short UMW meeting after church today. So um, make sure if you're a lady, you stay. Okay. And yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. Mary Lou? Uh, those attending the meeting Monday night will be Ricky, Sharon, Janie, Angie, Pastor Lori, and myself. Okay. Okay. And then most meetings. Uh, this is the one for the budget that just took out. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to have input into the finances, any meeting in the Methodist Church is open. I've never seen anybody show up that shouldn't, so. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm glad you announced those to remind you that you should be here. I uh, saw somebody else's name. Okay, yeah, please. Um, I have a dishwasher and a gallon jar. So you were a washer and a gas dryer that preferred? Okay. And if you know somebody that's in need of those, that would It's good to have Mary Bell back in church. Yes, it is. Yay. 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 Amen. We're glad. Any other announcements? Well, we will have sharing during our prayer time. If you think of anything else you want to share this morning. As we get started, let's go to God in prayer to get started. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power of work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and blessings, for your great love and care. Forgive us when we don't thank enough for who you are, for what you do, for all you've given. Help us to set our eyes and hearts on you. Renew our spirits and fill us with your peace and joy. We give you praise and thanks, for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please stand if you're able for the call to worship located in your bulletin. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon God's name. Make God's deeds known to all people. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on God's wondrous works. Give praises to God's holy name. All those seeking the Lord, let your hearts rejoice. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is number 131. We gather together. church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Thank you. Also to Maureen for doing the cornucopia course. Yes. Mm -hmm. She always does that every year. 
Who does that? Maureen Miller. Miller. Right. Okay. And I'd like to put Joan and Pat McAllister on our prayer list. Uh, I went to church with them down in Greenwich when we lived there. And our kids were the same age as theirs. So in, uh, they lost a daughter some years back. She was in a car accident. Now they lost a son from cancer. Our male lady, I used to go to church with down there. That's how I find this out. So I told her, I said, I would put them on our prayer list. They're very, very good Christians, and uh, I felt very sorry for them. Okay. So, so you said McAllister? McAllister, yes, yeah, MCC. So that's Joan and Pat McAllister. Thank you. Lost their sons. We will pray for them. And Mary, you had a great grandchild. Thank God for that. Whew, and Mama, and <laughs> pray for her. Covering. Yes, right. Go ahead. Also, the family of Ricky Lutton. I think he was going to be a few children of our price. I grew up with his parents. Okay. I didn't know the boys perfectly. I, I, I know him, but I didn't know him. Jimmy Lord kept on the work of my grasses. Yeah, he's already, he's already on the board. So pray for the family of Richie Lupton, who passed away. Okay, go ahead. Ed? Yeah, I'm very thankful. I had to go Thursday to the hospital and did a procedure where they, you know, they cleaned the tube and everything and checked my heart, make sure everything was fine, and everything came out great. So Amen. Well, thanking God for Ed having a good checkup. Sally? I stepped out of my comfort zone this week. Okay. I went to my 50th high school reunion. I haven't been in touch with anyone the whole time. I went by myself. I was semi terrified, but it was really neat and it was nice. And some people just stayed in their zone. Some people came and talked to me. And it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Yes. Somebody has a birthday. Somebody. Somebody has a birthday this week. And who says somebody? Somebody that we couldn't do without in this church. Yes. Sister Mary, I'm assuming. She's trying to hide her head. I know. She's trying to hide herself. If she could crawl into the pew right now, she would. just the lady tinkers on the piano. She does a lot of great things God uses her for, so we thank God for you. Thank you. Anything else you want to share this morning? Yes, Brett. I'll put uh, Bob okay. Hutchings on the prayer list. He was the most big of the things. He was my cross-country coach in Richmond. Oh. He just had a massive heart attack this past week. Whoa. And that's the last I heard. I don't know how he's doing or anything like that. But yeah. Bob Hutchings. Oh, Bob Hutchinson? Hutchings. Hutchinson, yes. He had a heart attack, so we need to pray for him. Anything else? Okay. Anything else we want to share this morning? I want to pray about. He lives with regular member on our list. Um, we also pray for Josh Wolf, who serves on the Navy. In the Navy, <clears throat> unspoken request. We have a list, unfortunately, a long list of those with cancer. 
So we pray for healing for several folks as well. <laughs> Anything else you want to pray about? Let's go to God in prayer this morning. Lord, we come to you today in a week where we remember and take time to give thanks to you. It's a shame we only do that once a year. We should do it every day. But we take a moment today to thank you for our church and for our leaders, that they help us to be your voice and your love in this community. I thank God for them. I want to lift up those we record remember, Louise, Ed and Shirley, Ruth, Jane and Terry, and Chase. Lord, these are people that are dear to our church, and we pray that you would bless them. And whatever need they have, you would provide for them. For Josh Wolf is serving in the Navy, Lord, I ask that you would bless him, keep him safe, and also help him as he does his daily task to do well, to serve you and our country well. For any unspoken request, maybe somebody's watching online, or maybe somebody just didn't feel comfortable sharing, Lord, I ask you to hear their hearts and their prayers. Lift up those with cancer, Sherry Fisher Riley, Connie, Baby Lila, Audrey, Patty Table, Cheryl Ripper, Bob Lowe, and Stephen Biggs. Unfortunately, Lord, that list keeps getting longer and longer. And uh, cancer diagnosis is hard on everyone. So I pray for those on that list and their families, that wherever they are in their cancer journey, that you would bless them and heal them and prepare them for whatever comes next. Also pray for healing for Kim, Pastor Jack, Ralph Gale, John Gorman, Ron McDonald, Vincent, and Nina. Lord, they need your healing touch today, so I ask that for you, for them. For Ray and Angie, who have the stomach bug that's going around, I pray that you would heal them as well, and that it's short-lived, <laughs> because it's miserable, so be with them. We pray that you would be with this new grand, great-grandchild and married and raised, and that you would bless, bless them and give them a full life, and that they would desire to follow you in all they say and do. <laughs> We're thankful for Ed, who had a great checkup, and I pray that you continue to keep his health on the right track and help him to do the right things to help it stay that way. For Bob Hutchinson, the Hutchinson that had a heart attack, Lord, I ask that wherever has happened since then that you would continue to heal him and um, be with his family as they navigate hospitals and whatever they have to do next. We pray for the family of Rich, Richie Lupton, who died in a car accident, Lord, I ask for comfort for them. We also pray for Joan and Pat McAllister, who lost a son to cancer. We ask for comfort for them at this time. We're grateful also for some things. We don't just have doom and gloom. We have things that we want to praise you about. And Sally got to go to a reunion and reconnect with some people from our high school high school, and I thank you for that trip as well, uh, time well spent. And we're grateful for Sister Mary and her ministry here and that around this area, and I thank you for a life well lived and that she is uh, with us and using her gifts here as well. Be with us as we, we worship today and help us to learn and connect with each other and connect with you. Hear us now as we pray the prayer you've taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for the children's moment. And uh, I'll let you guys stay there as long as you pay attention. <laughs> now somebody mentioned what's on the altar today. Can you see from where you are? Maybe you have to come down. There's a thing on top of the altar. Are you going to come down? Makes everybody else feel better when you come down here and sit in front of you. 
Sometimes you guys do it under protest, that's why. Okay, you can come sit in the first pew, if you can see from there. You see what's on the, on the altar table? Do you know what that's called? You, you, might, you might have heard somebody say it. What is it called? Anybody else? Cornucopia. That there is called a cornucopia. It's sometimes called a horn of plenty. Then you don't have to remember that's cornucopia. <laughs> it's horn of plenty, right? It's usually filled with all kinds of foods like apples, oranges, grapes, squash. Here's a corn. It's a symbol of an endless supply of food. Today it's usually made from a basket similar to this one, but many years ago it was a goat's horn that was hollowed out and filled with food. That sounds yummy, doesn't it? <laughs> Good thing it evolved to a wicker basket. We see most of the time of the year because this is a time when fruit crops are harvested or they've just been harvested. The United States is used as decoration for Thanksgiving. So sometimes you'll see that on Thanksgiving decorations because it's a symbol of all the good things we have to enjoy. And it reminds us of the first Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for. And what are some things you're thankful for? Are you thankful for anything? Can you name one thing? Your dog. Oh, I love my doggies. You have anything you're thankful for? Your daddy, I should have known. You take it, as long as she's giving it, right? <laughs> oh. We should be thankful for all we have. And that's, we should also give thanks to God. The Bible tells us every good and perfect gift comes from God. So when somebody gives you a gift, you say thank you. <clears throat> and we should thank God as well. We should do it more than just one day a year. We should do it all the time. So let's take a moment. We're going to thank God today. Lord, we thank you for all the good gifts you give us. Most of all, we thank you for your love and the gift of your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. And thank you very much for coming down. You can go upstairs with Grandma. Okay? If you will, anyway. I know you love your daddy. Maybe Grandma can hand him. Our next hymn is another Thanksgiving hymn, so it might be a little rusty, but we'll get it by the fourth verse. Come, ye thankful people, come, number 694. Please stand with your body or spirit uh, and sing with me.
1897, Johnson Oatman, he was a New Jersey, he's a Jersey guy, Methodist local pastor, wrote the most, his most beloved hymn of all, Count Your Blessings. But listen closely to the beautiful lines of his song. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, see what God has done. While on a short-term missions trip, Pastor Jack Hinton was leading worship at a leper colony, leper colony on the island of Topanga. A woman who had been facing away from the pulpit turned around, and Hinton said she was disfigured. Her nose and ears were completely gone because she had leprosy. And she lift a fingerless hand up and said, asked, can we sing Count Your Blessings? So he became overcome with emotion. He left the service. He was followed by a team member who said, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again. And he said, yes, I will, but I'll never sing it the same way. Thanksgiving is just around the corner. And our scripture for today will give us a perspective on how we can be thankful. So our scripture today is from Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. With Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. For thousands of years, God's people have recited these beautiful lines, yet never have come to grips with the fundamental question, how can a person bless God? It's easy to see how God blessed David or blesses us, but how could we bless God? Well, David answered this question in the next phrase. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget none of his benefits. So a person blesses God by remembering all God has done and thanking God for it. If God blesses us with gifts, we should bless God with gratitude. Giving thanks to God must be sincere, not like when your parents tell you, say thank you, and you have to say it. should be sincere. David called on all within him to remember all the Lord's benefits. The great theologian, Charles Spurgeon, said God's all cannot be praised with less than our all. These moments of gratitude should also be specific. David is some of the things God gave him which he was grateful. So this Thanksgiving, why don't we join David and thank God for the blessing first of forgiveness. David needed forgiveness badly. He's had a past. <laughs> and if you have a past too, like me, it's okay. He turned out all right. He committed, though, adultery with a young woman he saw on a rooftop next to him. When she turned up pregnant, if you don't remember the story, he connived to cover that sin by ordering her husband's death so that he could marry her, make her his wife. So adultery and murder. <laughs> Some big sins there, big sins. I'm sure David's cheeks burned with shame. He must have died a little each time he thought of what he did. He could not take it back. He couldn't fix it. All he could do was call on God and ask for forgiveness. And when he did, God gladly and generously forgave him. No wonder he offered thanks for forgiveness. Think back to a day when sin weighed heavy on your soul and shame made you hope no one found out what you did. Remember the hot tears that spilled down your cheeks as you begged God for forgiveness. 
Remember how quickly God came to you, how clean your soul felt when he washed away your sins. Stand up with David and praise God for your sin is forgiven and is gone. David also remembered God as a healer. The psalmist declared it was the Lord who healed all diseases. The simple meaning of this is whenever and whatever there had needing a need for healing, it was God who had done it. Don, David gave God credit for all healing and blessed the Lord by praising him about it. Some people may ask me if I believe in healing, divine healing, and I do. I confess that I do. But there is no other kind. There's no healing that isn't divine. It seems that God usually heals by the means of doctors and medicine and hospitals. But sometimes God heals without doctors and medicine and hospitals. But always and only it is God who heals. More than 400 years ago, a French doctor named Ambrose Pierre confessed, I dress the wounds, but God heals them. Some are alive and here today only because God healed them. And when disease sapped their strength and robbed them of their health or injury, left them broken, God touched their bodies and healed them. So we give thanks for that today. But don't limit this healing to physical healing alone. David said God heals all disease, including those of the mind and the soul. At a meeting of the Catholic Charismatics at the University of San Francisco in November 1978, a woman told how God healed her of her shame. Shame that she grew up poor with few privileges that she seemed to have, others seemed to have. Others there testified that God healed them of their temper. Anybody got a temper? I'm going to do some baby. God healed them of their memories, their hate in their heart as well. So when you count your blessings this Thanksgiving, thank God for healing. God is also our protector. For David, the pit was the place of death and destruction. And he said that he was redeemed from that. And that meant not so much bringing back his life from that realm as keeping him from that realm. David praised the Lord for rescuing him from premature death. In his dark moments, when tragedy threatened and disaster confronted him, God stepped in and saved his life. From David's earliest days, he was a child of providence. He had cliffhangers and narrow escapes by the dozens. He seemed to live a charmed life. From the jaw of the lion, the paw of the bear, and remember his stories from the bottoms. Goliath's sword, he was saved from that. And the javelin of Saul, he seemed to get a lot of it. tough spots. <laughs> time and time again, God stepped in to snatch David from the clutches of death. No wonder he sang this song of thanks. Remember he said, God redeems my life from the pit or destruction. Every person alive is a child of providence. Everyone here can say at some point they've lived a charmed life. You're alive today because God has protected you from dangers and from death. All the way from your earliest days, you are a walking miracle. Often when you're least aware of it, God preserved you from deadly accidents and lethal illness. Have you stopped to bless the Lord? by thanking him for protecting you. When you count your blessings this Thanksgiving, thank God for his protection. We also have a loving God who gives us strength. The Hebrew word for crown here in verse 4 comes from a root that means to circle around, to surround, hem in. And David blessed God by praising him for God's all-encompassing love and strength. Old-time gospel quartets used to sing of being within the circle of his love. And there have been many times when you despaired, making it through. When you felt you've gone as far as you can, you've given all that you've got. When it looks like you're about to go under. When your strength may have failed. 
God lifted you up and gave you a new lease on life. So when you count your blessings this Thanksgiving, thank God for his love and strength to endure. Now this list from David is just a suggestion. It's not exhaustive. These are not all the things which he owed God thanks. These are only some of the most important things he felt. So find time this Thanksgiving to get alone with God and think of all God has given you and all you owe him and bless him by thanking him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We take this moment to thank you for all the blessings, the way you blessed us. So we bless you by saying thank you. Thank you for your love, for forgiveness, for strength to endure. Your name we pray. Amen. Now we will continue to worship the Lord by presenting our tithes and our offerings. to give back to our church. And so we ask that you would bless this offering that it multiply and be used for the good of your kingdom here in Newport and for us and for our, our world. Amen. So since I talked about counting your blessings, if you, if you have a celebration hymnal or you can turn to the insert in your bulletin, we're going to sing Count your blessings at 786 in the celebration hymnal, or you can find the insert in your bulletin with the verse.
Anybody have a favorite hymn they'd like to sing? Three eighty-one. Three eighty-one. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Okay. Three eighty-one. We'll sing the first and the last. Thank you. 
ladies will have a UMW right after church. And for everyone, there's a hymn sing tonight at Fairton Methodist. You know the way. Just follow the route to Bridgeton. Six o'clock, though. Six o'clock. Please stand for the benediction. As you go from here, remember this. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting, from generation to generation. And just as the Father has compassion on his children, God has compassion on you as his children. So listen to his voice, do his will. Go out in the knowledge that the everlasting love of God goes with you.